Uh, my name's Simon Evans. I'm the head of stage here at the Young Vic. In terms of technology we use now, uh, obviously all of the machinery for actually building the sets is uh, large machine tools, big saws, welders, um, and now like things called CNC machines, which are computer-controlled, laser-guided, cutting, cutting saws that you can sort of program any strange and crazy complicated shape into, press go on the computer and it cuts perfectly to size within a millimetre's accuracy. Um, uh, and then also for sets like this for Happy Days, um, we often have to build out of completely brand new materials to us. So the, the, the cliff is made of a mixture of polystyrene, expanding foam. This whole hill is covered in latex and then textured and all sorts of like, actual bits of rock are sort of textured into it. Um, and so, yeah, I do a lot of learning on the job. So um, an example of an out of, all the, out of the ordinary thing, um, a view from the bridge, which we did here last year and has now just gone into the West End. The designer came in in one of our initial meetings and said, uh, we want it to rain blood at the end of the show. Um, like the heavens just open and it rains blood for possibly up to 10 minutes. Um, so we're like, okay, cool, brilliant. No idea how that's gonna happen, but let's make it happen. Um, and so we ended up, uh, you, there's a company called Water Sculptures who do sort of large fountain effects and things at awards ceremonies and we talked to them um, and we installed a really large system with lots of tanks and pipes and, and spray nozzles and it was all uh, controlled by electromagnet valves that we could we could switch on switch off uh, instantly because we needed to start it and stop it within a beat within a second uh, so we worked out how to actually do it and then we had to work out how we'd make the blood um, and if it rains blood for five minutes that's actually thousands and thousands and thousands of liters of, of, of blood or water or whatever um, and to do that every single show eight shows a week for eight weeks um, gets very expensive very quickly uh, so we we effectively invented our own blood recipe so the stage here we've got two auditory here at the unicorn um, downstairs on the ground floor we have uh, the claw theater which is basically a black box studio with a fixed grid um, which can be quite restrictive in terms of how we deliver things. There is no depth underneath in order to do, achieve anything like traps or anything like that. So many of the shows that we do there are always pushing the boundaries of how we can, how we can deliver those, but also pushing the boundaries of the space and its limitations. Up in the Western is very much more um, a traditional space. It's, it's got two layouts. It can be used thrust or it can be used traditional cross arch end on. Um, we tend to deliver uh, most of our productions using the thrust layout because it enables you to, for younger audiences, which is what we specialise in, um, bring the action closer to the audience. Again, it's slightly, we've said a number of times, it's slightly more immersive, but it, it's, it also enables us there to be able to do things like traps. We've got small amount of depth underneath um, this four stage area, it, which enables us to kind of you know put entrances and exits. So the Young Vic is, uh, as far as I know, actually, completely unique in, in terms of a, as a theatre space. You know, you, you, you think of your classic theatre that you have in the West End, say, and you have an archway and you've got a bank of seats and an auditorium where the audience always sit and then a stage area where the action always takes place and, and sometimes there's, there's a flying system, uh, well, most of the time there's a flying system in there uh, and we, we sort of have none of that. We have a big, empty, octagonal room um, that's... 20 metres across by 20 metres across um, and just a, a, a grid of catwalks and equipment upstairs that we can use to basically move the stage to wherever we want it and move the auditorium to wherever we want it within the architecture of the building. So, we, you know, we can take out uh, an entire part of our balcony. We can take out another smaller part of another balcony. Uh, a lot of what we're sort of sat on is, is just made of temporary platforms um, and we have to make it look like it's part of the building every single time. Part of that is that we have the technology to make that happen and uh, we can create our own flying system anywhere we want to. We can create 
our own stage wherever we want to. We can we can make that stage move. We can make it turn. We can you know we can we make sure we have the tools to achieve that. The layout and the design of the space though is very traditional. It has a counterweight flying system. We have 32 of those. Um, that we have a unique at the time, 10 years ago when this building was built, a unique uh, way of being able to divert some of our bars uh, and then enable to fly over the auditorium. So we can bring bits and pieces of scenery in and out kind of over the auditoria. Um, we have a number of access bridges which we can use for drops, which we can use for performer flying. Um, and every aspect of the roof is a rigging point, so we can hang things basically from anywhere. So the limitations of the space, I think we like to think of them as challenges rather than limitations. So basically, you know, there, there is an, an amount of the room that is built out of concrete and we just can't move it. Um, so I think some of the best set designers who work in here interact with the building rather than try and make it disappear. We don't have any height. That's, that's one thing, you know, yet whilst we do have a small amount of height up in the grid, we've got you know, most theatres will have above their stage an, a, another 10 metres that is as big as the stage. They can just have anything that's on there and just get rid of it immediately. We don't have that. We've got a roof sort of seven metres above our head that we can't get past. But that leads you to be more creative. Um, and you think about ways that you can achieve the same things, but in a slightly different way. Keeps you on your toes. It's less reliable than people, certainly. When, when you're talking about a, live, like a situation in a live show, if you've asked one person to be solely responsible for doing one thing, you know that 99 times out of 100, they will do that, whereas machines suddenly can stop working and you can't work out why, um, which is one of the more frustrating things about technology. It, it strangely can be less reliable. Uh, one of the really sort of interesting, exciting things is that it's almost never the same you know we, we change it around every single time and whilst that's a lot of work um, it also keeps things really fresh you know it's a new challenge every single time and we're being asked to make a different space a different room and a different atmosphere um, and I think that's really rewarding when you when you see it you know one week apart we've created a new theatre uh, and that's really cool